So the inheritance effector is quite an interesting one because it behaves uh, really differently to the other effectors and it hasn't got just one use, it's got multiple purposes and I'm just going to go through three of the main kind of uses of the inheritance effector. So I'm just going to start off with, a, with an object for my cloner, so maybe a cube and I'm just going to make it a bit smaller and I'm going to drop that into a cloner. I'm going to set the cloner to a grid array and I'm just going to put that to the side. Now I'm going to create a second object, maybe a cylinder. I'm going to click on my cloner and add an inheritance effector. So the first uh, use is the simplest kind of method and if I just drag and drop the cylinder it just basically copies the kind of position and rotation of the cylinder. So it's almost like a direct uh, parenting mode. If I rotate my cylinder, the cloner just copies the kind of motion exactly, sorry, the position and the rotation exactly, but not the scale. So that's the first uh, very simple use. Pretty much uh, kind of like a parenting functionality. So the second uh, use is I'm just going to drag and drop the cylinder again and this time instead of direct I'm going to set the inheritance mode to uh, animation and um, I'm actually going to play some animation on my cylinder so just some random keyframes position and rotation and then I'm going to go to frame 30 and just kind of switch it up a bit a little bit long X and just place a keyframe there And I'm just going to play this back. And as you can see, the cloner is basically copying the animation of the cylinder. Except, there seems to be a dif difference in time. And that's because, if we go to the inheritance effector, it's basically taking this uh, 30 frame animation on the cylinder and it's stretching it to 75 frames, as you can see here. So, if I want this to kind of finish at the exact same time, I just set it to 30 frames, like this. Now if we play back, um, it's happening at the exact same time. And you can obviously uh, stretch this really long. So it's taken ages for the cloners to kind of catch up with the animation of the cylinder. So I'm just going to put it back to 30. Now another interesting thing is um, step gap. If we increase that even just by one, the animation basically happens in stages on the cloner, which can give some pretty cool effects. And the more I increase the step, uh, step gap, the longer the delay between like each cloner to kind of catch up with the animation. So that's quite interesting. And I can also uh, tick loop animation. You'll also notice that uh, when you increase the step gap, now it's not finishing at 30 frames, it's kind of taking maybe triple the time. And it's taking about double the time when step gap is 1. So it's almost like a multiplier in some way. And this in and out, to and from give uh, different results as well. And we can also loop the animation, so it basically, <laughs> when you use it in conjunction with the step gap, it gives you some kind of crazy results, but without the step gap, it basically just loops the animation again and again. So some pretty kind of crazy stuff going on there. And um, so that's the uh, second use. Generally, it's basically just copying the animation of the kind of um, defined object. And the third use is, you've probably seen this in a lot of tutorials, is a kind of morphing uh, method. So I'm just going to um, reset my inheritance effector. 
I'm just gonna delete all the animation on my cylinder. So we're back to square one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a matrix. And as you know, a, a matrix is basically a cloner, but it just kind of it doesn't have any objects in it. These points are basically just positions. It's basically a matrix of position data. So I can uh, go to my inheritance effector and drag and drop this matrix in to the selection. And uh, sorry, I just dropped it into the selection by accident. Put it in the object. And if you choose a direct mode, I can basically, by adjusting the strength control, I can get the cloners to move to a new position as defined by this matrix. And if I add a, like a vibrate tag onto the matrix, just add it, give it some vibration. These cloners should try and catch up. I'm just gonna animate the strength here and a hundred at sixty. Let's see what happens. And you can see with the vibrate tag on the kind of matrix. The cloner cubes kind of catch up with the vibration of the matrix. So that's a pretty interesting effect.